Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing these sunscreens from the brand Elastin Skincare. This has been a highly requested review for quite some time, especially there's a lot of interest in this tinted sunscreen. I guess it's really popular, the Hydra Tint Pro Mineral. So we're gonna be going over those today. I'm gonna to be giving you my opinion, sharing with you what the ingredients do, and you're gonna be seeing some images of how it looks on my skin. Anyways, all that typical stuff of a sunscreen review, but before getting into it, give this video a thumbs up if you like sunscreen reviews from a board certified dermatologist. Make sure you're subscribed and you have your bell notification turned on, that way you are the first to know when I get a new video out to you all. Elastin, it's one of those medical grade skincare brands, and I say that in air quotes because medical grade there's no regulation into the usage of that term. It's by and large a marketing term. And you know, it's just kind of a strategy certain skincare brands use to market their products. Often they're sold, you know, in a doctor's office or in a med spa. Um, but you know, you can also buy them online. It doesn't necessarily mean that the ingredients are any better than what you could get, you know, at Walmart or your drugstore at all. Um, it doesn't mean that the sunscreens are going to be any better at protecting you from the sun than you know anything else. All right, first of all is the Hydra Tint Pro Mineral Sunscreen. So this is a tinted mineral sunscreen. It's got both zinc and titanium dioxide as the active ingredients that protect the skin from ultraviolet rays. If you are someone who has sensitive skin, in my opinion, mineral sunscreens tend to be a lot easier to tolerate. Also, if you've got the sensitive skin condition rosacea, you may find that mineral sunscreens are better suited. They don't aggravate flares for you. I also find that mineral sunscreens are easier to use around the eyes. A lot of chemical sunscreens can burn there, sting, seep into the eyes. So if you're in the market for a tinted mineral sunscreen, this may have piqued your interest and it's tinted. So that means that the ingredients in this that offer the tint, they're called iron oxides. Those ingredients offer some additional protection against blue light. It mostly comes from the sun and we know can actually drive hyperpigmentation uh, and make the hyperpigmentation a lot more persistent and stubborn to fade. So we often are counseling patients who have any type of hyperpigmentation, melasma. Uh, we're counseling them now to choose sunscreens that are tinted because that iron oxide component has been shown to help offer some additional protection against those other, wa other wavelengths from the sun. This is an SPF 36 water resistant sunscreen. It's water resistant up to 40 minutes. So in my opinion, that SPF and the water resistant factor and the fact that it's gonna offer you visible light protection possibly in addition to UV protection, I think this makes for a good daily facial moisturizer. Let's talk about some of the other ingredients. Ectoin. Ectoin is an emollient. It's also got water binding ability, so it's hydrating. It may help in minimizing oxidative stress in the skin because it is an antioxidant. Now my problem with this brand, if you go on the website, they say that the Ectoin in this, they claim that it is gonna provide protection from blue light and that it can repair sun damage. Those are really bold claims to make about Ectoin because it hasn't been shown to actually do that in human skin. So those are pretty bold claims. You know, at best, Ectoin may act as an antioxidant, which yes, can mitigate some of the damage from UV exposure, but it can't actually remove sun damage. There are some lab studies on cells in a dish suggesting that Ectoin may help with uh, repairing DNA damage upon exposure to infrared radiation, which is not the same as ultraviolet radiation. But again, that hasn't been actually taken into human study. So that is a pretty bold claim to make. And I'm surprised they make the claim that it will protect against blue light. Sure, blue light exposure does generate free radicals and the antioxidant property of this may help you know, reduce some of that. However, the, the main evidence-based ingredient in this that can offer some protection against blue light is the iron oxides that are in the tint, you know, that are from the tint. But, um, you know, I guess they don't really want to market it that way because then all of a sudden it's like, well, can I just use any tinted sunscreen? But consumers, you know, they're, they're making it seem as though Ectoin is a lot more novel and setting their formula apart from others on the market. 
I think that's, that is a bold, almost bordering drug claim that they're making. This also has phytoene and phytofluene. Those are carotenoids, antioxidants, which likewise may help in reducing oxidative stress upon exposure to environmental stressors. You know, you think of sunscreen as protecting you from UV rays, which is what it's supposed to do, and this should. It's passed, uh, you know, the regulatory metrics for, uh, you know, sun protection testing. But uh, you're also exposed to a lot of other environmental insults, not only from UV rays from the sun, but you know, I already mentioned visible light, infrared, and you're exposed to pollution that can create free radicals. So, you know, they're, they're trying to sell you on the idea that their sunscreen has antioxidants in it. Whether or not the antioxidants actually work to reduce free radicals, uh, you know, they haven't proven that in their product. Antioxidants are pretty fickle to work with, I'm not saying they don't work or can't work, but they haven't proven that the antioxidants in their formula actually get into the skin and do these things. Thermus thermophilus ferment. This is a bacterial ferment. Frequently, these types of ferments are found in skincare products. They're thought to have antioxidants, again, as well as moisturizing properties. And then something called asterisk gravidin's extract that's a botanic extract that may have antioxidants and it has hydroxy methoxy phenyl decanone an antioxidant that may help in improving hyaluronic acid levels in the skin i say may because it's largely industry-based uh, supplier data not anything that's actually really been shown in human skin on actual real people so those are all the ingredients in this uh, it is like I said at the beginning it is water resistant SPF 36 so this would be a good option for like around the eyes if you're looking for a tinted sunscreen I think this makes for a good everyday moisturizer and I do like that it's water resistant I just find that that stays in place a little bit better the tint on this for me is a touch on the orange side I'm going to show you guys a photograph of myself wearing this I've had it on in this photograph for roughly an hour and you can see um, it's not like super orange but if you look you know kind of carefully it does look a little on the orange side my other issue with this product is that I did encounter some pilling which pilling is basically where the sunscreen peels up off of the skin I did encounter that uh, so if you're somebody who has really oily skin you may, you may be more likely to encounter that, or if you're using a lot of products in your morning routine, you may run into issues with this particular product. My other problem with this is just a technical issue, and that is the packaging kind of leaks all over the place. Um, it's a tube and a pump, and I do find that after I use it and I put the lid back on, the following morning, I've got a bunch of mess of sunscreen all over, and I don't know why that keeps happening. Uh, because I don't, you know, I don't squeeze it or anything. I guess it's just with time, some leaks out. It's kind of messy in that regard and you end up wasting some. But otherwise, I give this sunscreen, in my opinion, just in terms of how it wears, how it looks, how it performs, I give it a three out of five. It's not the best sunscreen I've ever used. It's not the worst sunscreen I've ever used. Shape Magazine awarded this the 2021 Best Tinted Moisturizer which I think is a stretch. There are you know, equally good, if not better, tinted moisturizers out there. Um, but again, I don't think it's bad. I think it's actually pretty good, but I just think, you know, in my experience, I've tried out a ton of sunscreens. I think there are better ones out there. This one is not inexpensive, however. It's $60 for 3.2 ounces, which equates to $18.75 per ounce. You, you know, I'm sure they have sales and whatnot on their website from time to time. So that's the tinted one. Now, they also have a SPF 30 non-tinted sunscreen, the Silk Shield All Mineral sunscreen with trihex technology what all right so let's just talk about it it's a zinc oxide sunscreen so there's no titanium dioxide in this it has the ectoin in it uh, which they like to make this loosey-goosey claim is going to reduce blue light damage or protect from blue light has been shown to do that but it is a good ingredient hydrating and it also has that phytoene and phytofluene i'm looking down at my notes because these are not like these are not ingredients that I'm super familiar with other than knowing they are carotenoids. And it also has this trihex technology, which they make the claim is going to help remove damaged collagen and elastin as well as improve 
production of collagen and elastin. You know, as we age, we, our skin loses elasticity and we have less collagen. Sun's rays destroy those things as well. So they, they're making it seem like this pep, these, these two peptides are gonna make that better for us. Now with peptides, uh, take it with a grain of salt because it's going to be based on industry studies largely. There's not robust studies on these different proprietary peptides showing that they get into the skin and do these things. But I've said this, anytime I talk about peptides, I point this out, they do function as humectants, meaning they can help with the hydration of the top layers of the skin. And that is going to give you a wrinkle smoothing effect, albeit temporarily. It's not like it's actively changing the collagen or the elastin in your skin, but it can make it look better. What are the peptides in this? Again, I'm gonna look down here because they're, they're not something that rolls off the tip of the tongue. Palmetto oil hexapeptides. And this is actually a peptide that is a fragment or a part of elastin. And I guess, you know, the uh, manufacturer's data shows that in a clinical study, uh, one of their clinical studies, uh, that it actually did improve uh, wrinkles as well as skin tone. Uh, and I believe that study was placebo controlled. Again, it's an uh, industry study, so it's not like it's peer reviewed or published in a journal or anything. So I can't really look at that data. And it also has palmitoyl tripeptide one, which uh, that may sound familiar to you if you have ever used Matrixyl 3000 because it is one of the two peptides in Matrixyl 3000. It is a uh, peptide that is part of collagen and it's thought that by applying it to the skin, it can clue your body into repairing damaged collagen as well as producing new collagen. But at any rate, they are humectants. All right, so those are the ingredients in this mineral sunscreen. I have to say, it is nice in the way that it looks on the skin, it feels on the skin. I think it would make a very good daily moisturizer. The cast is not bad at all for a non-tinted zinc sunscreen. If you have a medium to deep skin tone, however, this is going to show up on your skin. It's going to give that lavender look for sure. But if you have a paler skin tone, then this you probably will barely notice on your skin, especially if you put it on, allow it to absorb and dry fully, and then put you know makeup on over it, you won't notice it. I really like the feel of it. It's very silky, just as they kind of imply in the naming of this product. It has a very nice silkiness to it. It dries sort of demi-matte, gives the skin a bit of a glow, but it's not shiny. Uh, it's not shiny at all, which is challenging to find in a water-resistant sunscreen. I will give them that. This is not a super shiny sunscreen. This particular one, I didn't have the issues of it pilling. I actually find that it is easy to spread on the skin, glides on, no problem. And you can put makeup cosmetics on over it without any issue either to mask the white cast that comes with it. It's a great option for around the eyes. Works well as an eyeshadow base. It has a buttery feel to it. Now, if you're someone who has ever tried, for example, the MD Solar Science Mineral Sunscreens, which I really like, um, you guys know those sunscreens, uh, or if you've ever tried them, they have this kind of buttery consistency. And a lot of you guys have verbalized you hate that, you don't like the way it looks or feels. There's a chance you won't like this either. It does have that buttery, silicone -y slip feel to it. But I actually really like it as a moisturizer. But it's not cheap. It's a lot more expensive than the tinted one. It's $55 for 1.9 ounces, which equates to $28.95 per ounce. So that's pretty expensive for an SPF 30 um, mineral sunscreen. There are a ton that give a similar cast that you can get at the drugstore. Um, so, uh, you know, if you're looking for an all mineral sunscreen, SPF 30, uh, a more affordable alternative to this, Derma E has a mineral facial sunscreen that is very good, a um, lot more affordable than this. I would rate this as a four out of five, and I'm giving it a slightly higher ranking than the tinted one because it didn't pill. And I also preferred the spread, the formula, the feel, the silkiness of this to the other one. Again, that's more of an individualized preference though, but that is going to factor into my rating of this as a four over a three. But I have to tell you guys, I don't know that I would repurchase either of these because um, while they're good, I don't think that they are superior to many others that I've tried, many of which are a lot more affordable. Let me know in the comments though, if you have tried either of these. I feel as though I've gotten comments from some of you 
that the hydro tint is like your holy grail. So if that's you, let us know, you know, what is it about the sunscreen that you like? Um, because when it comes to sunscreens, it is a very individualized journey. Like I can get on here and talk about the ingredients and the price point and how it performed for me. But at the end of the day, it does ultimately boil down to you and your skin. We're all different. And what works for one person is not necessarily gonna work for another person. And you guys know that. So just because it wasn't like my holy grail, if it works for you and it's your holy grail and it's the one that you are willing to consistently use, then by all means, I give it a five out of five in that case. But for me, you know, this is one I would not, I would not go out of my way to repurchase and there you go. Let me know though if you have tried any other products from Elastin, um, if you guys would like more reviews from this brand, because I know it is popular. Let me know in the comments, I certainly can do that for you all. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, bye.